you wouldn't be here, first of all, if you didn't know Greg Cannon and his fabulous work. So the introduction sort of is ridiculous. Uh, but I, I'm going to bring out just a couple of things that, um, that Greg has managed through the years to, to accomplish. Um, he's been nominated for three Emmy Awards. He's been nominated for two BAFTA Awards. He's won two Saturn Awards and was nominated for six other films. He received three Oscars for film. He received an additional Oscar recognition with the Science and Technical Awards for the development of special modified silicone materials for makeup application in motion pictures. This is the first scientific award that a makeup artist has received in the Motion Picture Academy. Then he went, not, went on to be nominated for six other films. So I'll just give you kind of a rundown of the last, oh, 12, 13 years. Um, in 1992, he was nominated for Hook. In 1993, he won an Oscar for Bram Stoker's Dracula. He was also running against himself that year because he was also nominated for Hoffman. In 1994, now we did 1992, 1993, 1994, he won an Oscar for Mrs. Doubtfire. In 1996, he was nominated for Roommates. 1998, nominated for Titanic. 2000, nominated for Bicentennial Man. In 2005, he received the Academy Science and Technology Award. And in 2009, very rough skin and textured skin. And, and I was like, because I hate using silicone foreheads because they just uh, they stick out too much and it just doesn't work. I've done it like in Bicentennial Man. On Robin, I didn't use a forehead. I'd use stipple on his forehead. And anywhere I can. But on Embeth, I used a very thin silicone, and it worked really, really good. But it has to be very thin, and sometimes it doesn't work. And I wanted to use the transfers for aging different parts, like the uh, crow's feet and uh, certain areas. And we found that the top lip and the crow's feet and the forehead worked unbelievable for the age makeups and then using the silicone for the rest of it neck cheeks chin eye bags uh, but it was on the film during it I was like what am I going to do for his forehead and then uh, Brian Sipes said well what about using a transfer for the forehead and I was thinking it won't work it's too big to wrap it around you know it's made flat just won't work so so uh, next day I came in and uh, he goes, what do you think? And I'm looking at one of our people in the shop. I go, what do you mean? And he goes, go, it's forehead. And I looked and he had a transfer piece on. And I couldn't see it. And I went, oh my God, amazing. So that's how the transfers came about. Uh, the interesting thing on the top lip was when we did silicone appliances, it, uh, with the cheeks, when they smile, you get these weird wrinkles in it. So by using the transfer, which you see in the pictures, it's so thin and stiff, but they can still act in it. It's still sculpted with little tiny wrinkles, but it's just paper thin. And with, by gluing that on there, then they work beautifully, no problem. I'll also show you on Kate how uh, we did the little crow's feet. The forehead comes down. I would stipple into, right onto the material, the transfers and the stipple would make it all just blend into each other and wrinkle and it uh, was so smooth because you know those shots of Kate and the close-ups and Benjamin I mean you know they were like they didn't even tell us they were doing that shot you know it's like this going out here the, the compliment it was a very difficult film to work on because uh, um, David Fincher isn't the easiest person to work with I knew that going in. I'd worked on a film with him before, but I knew he was the only one that could pull off the the film. You know, he knew the digital. I knew he would make me do the absolute best makeups I could do. Can you still hear me? Yes. Thank you. I knew he could still, uh, you know, pull the best makeups out of me, and I knew it was going to be a terrifying film to work on. And of course, it turned out much worse than I ever thought. <laughs> but, 
it's one of those films where you're on the film and you're going, uh, I have to do this film. It's once in a lifetime, you know, I hope it works. And luckily it did. I mean, I did, I had two weeks of tests where we did a lot of makeups, and I'll show you the tests. Um, Kate, uh, her makeups turned out pretty good the first time. They're very close, and we went with them, uh, the 85-year-old. And it wasn't until one year later to the day that we shot her scenes in the hospital. So I did the test makeup one year before, and then I didn't get to do any other test until the first day of shooting when they did the close-up. So the compliment you got from David Fincher was, you better make sure it's like that every day for the next two weeks. Uh, that, was, that was a compliment I got, which was pretty good. So, and then trying to do that for two weeks, that makeup, and match it every day in the age spots, and you know, it's, it's unbelievable, but it worked. So, and then to get, to be able to work with Kate Blanchett on makeups like that, it's just, you know, incredible, and Brad was great. Uh, the only problem I had with Brad is he wanted to try everything. We did that first makeup of, uh, what was his name, Wyatt, the artist? Andrew, yes. Andrew Wyatt is what we use where he really wanted those lines and everything. And we did a, a, a fatter, more realistic character makeup on Brad, and uh, it looked ridiculous. Because his face, it just, you know, if you're doing some weird movie, but it just was over the top, and it, no. So, so we did it, of course doing Brad as Brad as much as possible, of course, because he has to age to that. And then we did uh, the age makeup, and I really loved what we did in the test, which I'll show you. But then, you know, Brad, he wants to try thinner, less makeup, you know, less sculpting, even though he wants all this texture. So he said, I want the forehead, I want to do cheeks in the forehead material, transfers. So we did cheeks, which I never liked at all. It was, just didn't work. It was too shiny for me. Um, and just to show you how difficult this film got, at some point the uh, shop fell apart. I had to take it all over myself. Uh, someone would come in in the middle of the night. I had sculpted uh, Tilda Swinton's age makeup. Uh, Miles had finished it off. Beautiful. Someone would come in the middle of the night and re-sculpt the cheeks because they thought they knew better at the time. So I, I come in the next day and I'm just like, what the? And Miles is furious and then uh, that person wasn't there and I said, re-sculpt him. So he had to re-sculpt as best he could on the pieces. Things like that happening. Uh, someone decided when we did uh, Brad's cheap transfers that they should be dark, dark orange. And because they thought it would work better and you know, I'm on set and I get the pieces we do on the first day and no makeup in the world could have covered those pieces. And then they're yelling at me on set and I'm going, look, I didn't do it, you know. And I've already corrected it and tomorrow the new ones are coming with the right color and you know, luckily that saved me. I could have been fired at that point, they were so mad, but nothing I could do about it. Uh, and then the new makeup, of course, worked great. The color was perfect. So it was, it was quite an interesting film. Uh, someone had, because I was, in, I was in charge of the makeup, but people were trying to do things on the side in the other shop that existed before. And they like had sculpted Queenie's makeup, old age makeup, and it was really bad. I mean, it, it just was horrible. And luckily, we did the test, and I went to uh, David, and the producer and said, look, this does, this isn't working, you know, it's horrible, can I re-sculpt it? And they said, yeah, go ahead. So I went home for Christmas for two weeks, and Christmas Day till 6 a.m. the next morning, I sculpted the new age makeup, the 72-year-old, which you see in the pictures. So luckily that happened. And there were still some other things that I wasn't able to redo in the film, but it worked, you don't notice it, luckily, and most of it worked out great. So. Those are some of the problems of uh, big shops and, and 